Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, keeping it free, .blogspot.com. From time to time here online, I give my views on um, some big cases in the news, right? I'm an attorney here in California, not a criminal attorney, right? I'm a litigator and family divorce attorney, right? Nonetheless, I like to look through these criminal cases. I've given other videos where I've given my opinion that Oscar Pistorius is guilty, that Amanda Knox is guilty, right? That Reuben Hurricane Carter is guilty, right? I believe that Annie Dewani was murdered and that her husband had something to do with it, right? My views are here online. Now let's talk about really a breakthrough in podcast journalism. It's a great series. I strongly recommend it. It's called Serial and it's on iTunes and it's one of the more popular offerings on iTunes right now and it details a murder and a conviction that took place in 1999. Right? A uh, gentleman, Adnan Sayed, is in prison today for the murder of his girlfriend. Now let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. This case to me falls into a gray area. I'm just going to give you my opinion up front. Right? I don't see how this guy, based on this evidence, could have been convicted. Understand, the prosecution has a burden. They have to meet that burden beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal case, right? Especially one in which the crime is murder, right? They didn't come close to doing that. Adnan Syed should be a free man today. But, let me add, that while I believe he shouldn't have been found guilty, I don't believe he's telling the truth. Let's talk about the whole thing. This is Serial, right? It's a podcast you need to go to. I'm just summarizing it in my words, right? First, let me say also, on Reddit.com, there are comments from someone who claims to have been part of Syed's inner circle and that person claims that Syed is a psychopath I would encourage you to go to reddit.com and look up those comments let's talk about it there are two high school lovers from different cultures the man is from an Islamic family the woman is from a Korean family they break up a few weeks later the woman turns up dead. Now I know there are many facts mentioned in the Serial Podcast on iTunes. Right? It's a great podcast. But let's distill this down to a few facts which I believe should raise reasonable doubt as to the guilt of Mr. Syed. January the 13th, 1999 is the reference point date here. There are tight time windows. The victim is let out of school at 2.15 p.m. She is to pick up her younger six-year-old cousin at Campfield Early Learning Center at 3.15 p.m. She doesn't make it to her 3.15 appointment to pick up her younger cousin. No one sees her after 3.15 alive, right? Now, many days later, her body is found in a nearby park. The prosecution's chief witness is a man named Jay, who, after the murder, led law enforcement to the victim's vehicle. <clears throat> he claims that on January 13, 1999, the day the victim goes missing, the accused, Syed, gave him a phone and the use of Syed's vehicle. Right? Syed confirms this, but claims he did so. 
because it was the birthday of Jay's girlfriend and he wanted Jay to be able to treat his girlfriend. Right? Now understand Jay contends that the real reason that he received Syed's phone and car from Syed was because Syed planned to kill his ex-girlfriend. The plan was for Syed to call Jay after the murder so that he could pick up Syed after Syed killed his ex-girlfriend. Now the cell phone records show that the call came in, and you want to write this down, at 2.36 p.m. 21 minutes after the victim got out of school. Now let's freeze it right here. Here is the first problem, which by itself should have raised reasonable doubts. By 2.36 p.m., according to the prosecution and its main witness and the phone record, Syed is supposed to have strangled the victim in her car in a Best Buy parking lot a few miles from school. But there are witnesses who claim they saw the victim after 2.36 p.m. These witnesses blow the prosecution's timeline and theory out of the water. And let's be reasonable here. If one of your friends goes missing, wouldn't you remember the last time you saw them? Right? Also, think about the context here. The victim's a high school student. She gets out of school with other classmates at 2.15 p.m. If you're one of the classmates, wouldn't you remember whether or not you lingered after school for a few minutes right understand the window so tight here it doesn't allow for any lingering right and so if you're lingering for 10 minutes with the alleged victim wouldn't you recall that especially if her body's later found and these are the last moments that anyone has seen her alive Right? Let's freeze this further. If Syed gave Jay his phone, right? Jay is the prosecution witness, right? Then what phone did Syed use to make the call at 2.36 p.m.? The prosecution's theory, and they have to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt, is that Syed used a payphone at the Best Buy after strangling his ex-girlfriend, right? It's the prosecution's burden, given the importance of the 2.36 p.m. call, to prove this. Here's the problem. There is no record of there having been any payphone at Best Buy on January 13th, 1999, the day the call was allegedly made. Right? To paraphrase Johnny Cochran, or rather in the tradition of Johnny Cochran, let me just offer a phrase here. No phone, no case. Right? If they can't show us how Syed is supposed to have made that 2.36 p.m. phone call, then the prosecution can't prove its case. Let's go further. The prosecution wants us to believe that Syed got a ride from the victim after 2.15 p.m. when the victim gets out of class. Right? The theory is that the victim gets out of class at 2.15 p.m., 
Her ex-boyfriend comes up and says, hey, can I have a ride? Now, they're friends who say that the two of them remained friends after the breakup. Right? Somehow, from the passenger seat, right, without a gun or any weapon, Syed is supposedly able to convince her to give him a ride to the Best Buy, where he, presumably, strangles her and then goes to the payphone to call his friend. All of this is supposed to happen in 21 minutes. Here's the problem. There's a witness who operates a convenience stand right by the school who claims that she saw the victim drive away from the high school that day. And she claims that Syed was not in the car. Let's go even further. Does the timeline, 21 minutes, right, the difference between the 2.15 when the victim gets out of school and the 2.36 when this phone call is made, and understand, the cell phone records don't show another call that can fit into the prosecution theory of the case. Does the timeline, the 21 minutes, even allow Syed to ride with the victim to the Best Buy and then to strangle her in the parking lot? Now, according to the Serial Podcast, the people behind the podcast actually did the drive from the high school to the Best Buy. Their conclusion is that that could only happen in perfect traffic conditions. <clears throat> if the victim and Syed left the school right away. Right now, let me make a few points. If you go back and look at weather from that time period, you're going to find out the weather was so bad that I believe school was even closed at least one day because of weather. So let's just say the weather conditions aren't perfect. Also understand too, Syed is 17 years old at the time. Now think about your nerves. If you have never killed anyone ever before in your life, right? And the prosecution has no evidence that Syed ever killed anyone before at any time in his life. Do you believe that you would be able to efficiently kill your ex-girlfriend in such a tight time horizon with such a personal way of killing her? Right? Understand, this isn't a gunshot where it's bang, she's dead, you're out the car. Now this is strangulation, folks. That takes some time. Do you believe <clears throat> that anyone would be able to after getting a ride and understand that would take some time right you leave class at 215 you approach the victim you say hey I need a lift can you give me a lift then you're in the car together I'm guessing you're not racing to the Best Buy then you go to the Best Buy right is it plausible that a 17 year old would then be able to strangle his girlfriend then get out the car and make the phone call and have it all happen within 21 minutes let's go further the prosecution witness claims that Syed showed him the body of his girlfriend in the trunk of her car. In other words, Syed, after strangling the girlfriend, would then have had to taken her dead body out of the car and put it in the trunk. Understand, Best Buy is a public place. I understand it's a big parking lot. Right? I understand that there are parts of the parking lot where these guys would go to get stoned. Right? I'm sure some parts of the parking lot are more secluded than others. But we're talking about 
the afternoon here. This is supposed to have taken place right between 2.15 p.m. and 2.36 p.m. You're telling me that this guy's plan was to strangle his girlfriend, then take her lifeless body out of the vehicle, put it into the trunk of the car without anyone, any possible customer. Looking at that corner of the parking lot and seeing what's happening? You're telling me that the prosecution has no witness that saw this guy with this victim's lifeless body putting the lifeless body in the trunk of the car doesn't that sound a little bit incredible to you keep in mind too putting the lifeless body into the trunk of the car would have eaten into the 21 minutes in other words this guy wouldn't have had time to think he kills someone in a personal manner for the first time in his life right I'm guessing it's an overkill because if you've never strangled someone he had to make sure she's dead right then we're supposed to believe he gets out the car goes around to her side gets her body out the car pops the trunk then gets her body in the trunk let's just say without eyewitness testimony that seems like a reach to me then of course the guy is supposed to have calmly gone to the payphone that you know a payphone we don't even know existed and called his friend to pick him up that seems a bit of a reach right now let me say this given these factual issues and they're highly relevant factual questions understand we're not questioning on the periphery of the prosecution theory this is the heart of the prosecution's case one would think that the credibility of the prosecution's witness this guy named Jay would be above reproach right he would have to be someone who has some consistency in his version of events Right? It'd have to be someone who you look at and you would say, oh, this guy would never lie. Because, of course, without his testimony, the prosecution doesn't have a case. Understand, though, that Jay's story has changed over time. Changed in big ways. Right? His first story, believe it or not, didn't even involve picking up Syed at the Best Buy. Right? In some stories, he claims he helped Syed later bury the body. Right? Take the body out of the trunk of the car to the park and then bury the body. In other stories, he watches Syed bury the body. If his story is changing, which set of facts should a jury believe? If you don't know which set, then how could any jury have found this guy guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? I encourage you to listen to the podcast. I encourage you to Google the podcast. It's Serial Podcast. The uh, convicted person is Adnan, A-D-N-A-N, Syed, spelled S-Y-E-D. Right, now let me talk about briefly why I believe Syed's version of events is not true, in my opinion. Right? Syed... <laughs> according to friends, had moved on from his ex-girlfriend. Right? He seemed to be trying to get with another girl. When he bought his new cell phone, this other girl was either the first or second person he called. Now, understand, this other girl's phone, according to her, didn't accept voicemail. 
You couldn't leave a voicemail on her phone. Now, the day of the murders, Syed claims that Jay had his phone during most of the time before 5 o'clock, right? He's not near his phone before he hooks up with Jay after school activities, right? I believe he's at a track uh, uh, rehearsal or something like that. Right, so if you believe his story, he doesn't have his phone that day. He can't make any calls. Right, the only person who can make calls from his phone is Jay. Right, while Jay has the phone and Syed's car. You remember Syed lent his phone to Jay with his car for that day. Here's the problem. Jay didn't know this girl that Syed was trying to get with, right? This girl that was Syed's friend, right? The girl who Syed called when he bought his new phone. Jay didn't know her. There's no reason for Jay to have called her that day. Right? But yet the phone records show that during the time period where Syed claims he didn't have his phone, somebody made a call from the phone to this girl. Think about it. The call actually goes on too long for someone to believe that the person left a voicemail message. Worse yet, we know leaving her a voicemail message wasn't possible because she didn't have voicemail. Now the girl has testified in court that she was on the phone once. She's hazy on the date. Right? Understand the victim's body is not found for several weeks. You're asking people to remember what happened several weeks earlier right now while the people who knew the victim might remember the moment those who did not who attended other schools would not so this girl doesn't fully remember the date when she received the call from Syed where Syed put Jay on the phone right apparently there is a call everyone agrees it took place they just can't pin down the date and time when the accused, Syed, called this girl he's trying to get with and put Jay on the phone to say what's up. Well, understand it couldn't be any other time. If it's this time, then the story Syed has of not being near his phone is not true right well this couldn't be a butt dial or a pocket dial of the girl because the girl doesn't remember ever getting a phone call from Syed right where it's a multi-minute call and it's just a butt dial call right understand the call is too long to have been a voicemail call. Syed claims that the call must have been a voicemail call that resulted from a butt dial. Right? Because he had this girl on his, you know, saved phone calls. She was like number one or number two. And he believes that Jay may have called this girl by accident. Here's the problem. It couldn't have happened if the girl is correct and she didn't have voicemail. Right now, if the accused is lying about that, what else is he lying about? Also, it's a crucial fact because this call takes place literally within about two hours of the victim 
getting out of classes. Psychologically, it would make sense that if Syed killed ex-girlfriend, that he would then call a girl he hoped would be his future girlfriend, right? Just to hear her voice, just to know that he's moved on. He might even feel that he's done it to free himself mentally of the last relationship so he could move on to the future relationship. Now in Serial they question Syed about this phone call. I find his responses to be unconvincing and unsatisfactory. Right? So I can't tell you that Syed didn't do this crime. What I'm arguing in this video is that he shouldn't have been convicted of it. Because we have something here in the United States called a burden of proof, right? You can't be on a jury and just have a gut feeling based on incomplete evidence that the accused was involved in the crime. You need more than that, right? The prosecution literally has to prove the crime to you. And they can't do that with an unreliable main witness with contradictory witnesses, with no evidence of a payphone at Best Buy, and with a timeline that really is too short to allow what the prosecution is claiming happened within it. Right? The victim getting out of school, then giving a lift to the accused, then of course getting strangled, then put in the trunk, and then the accused making a call from this payphone to a friend. Right? And of course, the Best Buy is miles away from school. Right? So, that's how I see it. Let me hear, let all of us hear how you see it. Serial is still ongoing. Syed has an appeal that's pending. Right? It's clear that he didn't receive the best assistance of counsel at his case. His attorney didn't look into obvious areas of inquiry right let me hear from you if there are any facts I'm missing here that would either show evidence of guilt or evidence of innocence right if you feel I'm being unfair in characterizing the testimony of Jay the main prosecution witness if you have information that would suggest that there certainly was a payphone at the Best Buy. And keep in mind, it shouldn't be that hard for the prosecution to prove. Wouldn't there be a company operating payphones in that area? Wouldn't there be phone records, right, that would establish with the utility company, the phone company, the existence of a payphone at that area? None of this evidence has ever been presented in court. Also, if there's an innocent explanation that you're aware of for the telephone call to the girl Syed's trying to get with, who Jay didn't know, on the day of the murders, at a time when Syed claims he didn't have his phone, a call that goes multiple minutes to a phone that doesn't have voicemail. If you have an explanation for that phone call, I'd love to hear it because to me it's the weak point, it's the Achilles heel of Syed's contentions here. Let me hear from you. I hope you put your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.